one question has always nagged at me while watching Star Trek Voyager. Well, more than one, but this is the big one. When first flung to the ends of buttfrack nowhere of the Delta Quadrant, they immediately set a course for the Alpha Quadrant and start flying home at warp speeds. Conservative estimates suggest that the trip is going to take around 70 years and cover around 70 to 75,000 light years. Now they do say that along the journey they'll look for wormholes and technologies to shave time off, and they do, making the trip in only 7 years instead. A super impressive feat and one which should benefit Starfleet and the Federation greatly from the ship's collected knowledge. But they didn't know that when they initially set out. So why didn't they set a course for the slightly closer Gamma Quadrant? A quadrant where they know there is a wormhole straight to Bajor. Hi, Rick here and let's look at a theoretical. What if the USS Voyager set a course for the Gamma Quadrant end of the Bajoran wormhole, then used that to shortcut home? First off, there is no canon map of the Star Trek galaxy, in order to try to avoid plot holes. However, over the years, several maps used in the background have been recreated and star charts released. Alongside this, there are numerous projects that sort of required a map to make sense of the galaxy, so we have a rough idea of how things are laid out. But there does seem to be a slight disagreement on the exact location of the Gamma Quadrant end of the Bajoran wormhole, but most have it in the far fringes of the Gamma Quadrant, around here, equal distance from the Alpha and Delta borders, so that's what I'll go with. This sort of matches up with the description on StarTrek.com, which clarifies that the wormhole's tunnel snakes around 90,000 light years of real space time. Next thing, was Voyager aware of the Bajoran wormhole when it was snatched? Well, yep, considering that the vessel departed from Deep Space Nine after its relocation to the mouth of the Celestial Temple, as it was known, to track down the Marquis. You could argue that they wanted to avoid the Dominion, and in 2371, Jem'Hadar had already destroyed the USS Odyssey, so there is a valid concern there, but the Federation had no idea of the troubles to come. One factor we cannot account for are the other races that they may encounter at this end of the galaxy, as it's still vastly unexplored by the Federation, just as the Delta Quadrant was, so we have no idea if the vessel would encounter similar technological and spatial shortcuts as it did on its original route, so I'm going to assume that there would still be a similar number of advancements made with technology leading to a reduced travel time, just as it did in the shows. Well, more or less, like I say, this is a hypothetical. So let's pick up at the start. The caretaker array is destroyed and they move off towards the closest known route home, the Gamma Quadrant wormhole. It's still a considerable journey, but it is a lot closer than the border of the Alpha Quadrant. Anyway, the early encounters would still have played out the same. They were seemingly in the heart of Kazon space, and the Nistrum in particular were hounding the Starfleet vessel for a long time, so we'd still see plenty of them. I think Seska's betrayal would still have occurred, and maybe even the hijacking of the vessel at Kazon hands. Heading off in this direction, they would also probably not encounter the Voth, who lay claim to an expansive area of space just beyond the Necrit Expanse, a natural barrier between the less technological powers and the more adept ones closer to the galactic core. Eventually, they would still have encountered the Borg, which have expanded into every quadrant using their transwarp network, while not as densely populated in the Gamma Quadrant, it's unlikely that they'd have encountered Fluidic Space or Species 8472, but also had a much easier time bypassing Borg territory, meaning potentially no rescued Seven of Nine and maybe even no stolen Borg Transwarp coil. One thing that might be surprising is that they would still likely have encountered the Herogen as they drew closer to the Gamma Delta border, as they were a sparsely populated people ever expanding in search of new prey. There are records in beta content of the Dominion encountering them on the fringes of their empire. However, from what we've seen of the Herogen Com network, it didn't expand in this direction, so their presence would likely be less organised and more sporadic. So let's say that Voyager navigates the equally unknown waters of, well, let's call it the southwestern Delta Quadrant, 
evades the Borg, Hirogen, and other unknown inhabitants, and finally reaches the Gamma Quadrant. 2394 was the original return date of the USS Voyager to Earth, using its original path before Admiral Janeway cheated by time travel to cut that time down to 2378. So their original journey would have taken 23 years overall. Let's take a look as to where they hitched a ride on the Borg's transwarp network originally. Well, their entry point looks to be right near the Delta Beta border, meaning they must have originally spent a substantial amount of time navigating the Deep Beta Quadrant 2. So fun fact, had Voyager not utilised the Borg's transwarp network, they would have eventually ended up approaching Romulan space from the rear. That would have been a fun conversation. Can you imagine how Romulans would have reacted to a Federation vessel turning up on the far side of their space and trying to explain that they'd just traversed the entire Delta Quadrant? Methinks some interrogation may have ensued, unless Starfleet sent the Romulans prior warnings. Looking at this as if they took the Gamma route, then it looks like they wouldn't have been able to utilise the Borg's network, so it seems that they'd reached the Gamma Delta border in about, let's estimate, eight years. So just like the Deep Beta Quadrant, the Gamma Quadrant is still mostly unexplored to the Federation in the year 2379. Again, this is presuming they encountered similar shortcuts as their original route, which admittedly we couldn't possibly know. Some species that Voyager may have eventually had to brush shoulders with would have been ones not seen in Deep Space Nine, as they were further away than the lightly explored space seen before the Dominion forced the Federation to back off. We may have seen species such as the Herc, near mythological ancient antagonists of the Klingon Empire, maybe even the Yadaran's home. Whatever the time scale, they would most likely have missed the Dominion War, a war in which they played no part in, so that would have remained unaltered. Nevertheless, they would have eventually encountered the Dominion. By this time, the war was over. Odo had returned to the Great Link and hopefully brought with him a softer view of the other powers and species. It's almost certain that the intrepid vessel would have been seized by Dominion patrols, but if word made its way to the Founders, then I like to think Odo would have stepped in and offered Voyager safe passage to the Bajoran wormhole. Upon passing through alone, as the Dominion Federation Treaty necessitated the Dominion stay out of the Alpha Quadrant, the USS Voyager would have arrived literally at its starting point, Deep Space Nine. From there, it's a couple of weeks at low warp to waltz back into Federation space. Starfleet would have had no notion of the vessel's survival, however, as the ship would have never been able to contact the Alpha Quadrant with the Herogen Relay. This is, of course, all theoretical and dependent on assumption and non-canon materials. There is no way to account for any new technology or phenomena that the crew might encounter as this route is unexplored, so suggesting that they reach the Gamma Quadrant in eight years is generous, let alone the decade or more it would take to cross that quarter to reach the Bajoran wormhole. The overall journey, without any shortcuts, may well have taken around 55 years to reach the Bajoran wormhole, but even that is 15 years less than their original supposition. So why didn't they aim for the Gamma Quadrant? Next to the Alpha Quadrant, the Beta is the most known area of space to the Federation. While few Starfleet ships are allowed into its depths, being home to both Romulan and Klingon empires, scans and star charts do a good enough job of mapping out its sectors. Given the original projected route of Voyager, they would have spent around half their time in the Beta Quadrant too, but at least it was familiar ground, whereas the depths of the Gamma Quadrant were near completely unexplored. I'd say that they'd also want to avoid potentially aggravating the Dominion, at the time a mysteriously motivated foreign power, but, well, the Vardwar, the Ture, the Devor, Krenim, enough said. Of course, the real reason is that the Gamma Quadrant was DS9 territory, while the Delta was Voyager's, and I mean the shows. Naturally, they wanted to avoid each other's storylines and remain independent narratives, and having Voyager potentially rock up during the Dominion War would have been... Well, frankly, it would have been awesome and exciting, but still. Providing the location of the wormhole is more or less accurate, and that it doesn't collapse for some prophetic reason, I know maybe Cisco didn't drink the right blend of blessed coffee that morning. 
That's my theoretical on the perils faced by Voyager if it chose to make for the Bajoran wormhole. Do you think that this would have been a more optimal course, or can you think of another reason for Janeway opting for the direct route back home? Ultimately, that choice proved to be the right one, but at the time, no one could have known that. Thanks again for watching. I've been Rick, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.